All right, so if you're really good in basic math, well, then you should be able to do this problem in your head. So no paper, no pencil, no calculators. This is a mental math challenge. All right, so let's take a look at our problem. So we have parentheses 5 times 4 squared and parentheses divided by 2. Now, there is no time limit here, so feel free to pause the video and concentrate on uh, the steps, but we're only going to use mental math. All right, so if you have the answer, go ahead and put that into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to explain what I think is the best way to solve this problem using our brains only. All right, so uh, before we get started, though, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I've been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so again, this problem is designed to be fun, so hopefully no one's going to feel bad if you don't get the right answer, because... Uh, yeah, I think most of you out there probably know the math involved to get the right answer, but if you don't kind of practice mental mathematics, you know, practical math, doing quick calculations in our brain, well, you know, of course, that is kind of a skill and it can get a little bit rusty. But uh, once again, we have uh, parentheses 5 times 4 squared and parentheses divided by 2. Let's take a look at the right answer. The correct answer is 40. Now, if you got this right, you definitely get a happy face and an A-plus for your mental math capabilities, so congratulations. Now, a lot of you out there uh, may know the actual, you know, math uh, concepts to solve this problem, but, you know, if you're not practicing doing some quick calculations in your brain, well, it's kind of like a skill or a muscle. So let's go ahead and get into this right now, and let's just have fun with this problem. Okay, so here is our problem, and the first thing that we want to notice is that we have different things going on, right? We have multiplication, we have parentheses, we have powers, we have division. So uh, we have various mathematical operations. So in math, the, the things that we can do with numbers like add, subtract, multiply, and divide, these are called mathematical operators. And the uh, kind of the order we do this problem can generate different values. So we need to review something called the order of operations before we kind of get into the mental math uh, uh, part of this problem. So this brings me to this lovely phrase right here called PEMDAS. Now, hopefully you know this phrase or some sort of similar phrase, uh, but this is an acronym. These letters stand for something. And this is basically uh, the order that we need to follow when we have more than one math operator in a problem. So if you have a math problem with addition, uh, multiplication, division, parentheses, powers, well, we have to know the correct order to do this problem, and we need to follow this checklist right here. Okay, so what we're going to be doing is uh, going from left to right, and these letters obviously stand for something. Now, uh, this little um, acronym is referred to as PEMDAS in math, but there's a, a little phrase that you can remember this. It goes like this, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Once again, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Now, I don't know what Aunt Sally did, but uh, we thank her for her contributions to mathematics, and let's go ahead and get into this right now. All right, so the first thing here is P. Now, we're going to follow these letters from left to right, and if we have one of these letters in our math problem, well, then obviously we have to stop and address that. Okay, so P stands for parentheses. So if we have parentheses in our problem, then we have to start inside of the parentheses. But it's not just these type of parentheses. It could be brackets like this or squiggly brackets. And if you have a math problem with parentheses inside of brackets or another set of parentheses, you always go to the innermost parentheses first. Okay, so basically you're going to go inside of the parentheses, and then it's like another math problem. You have to kind of look inside of there and follow PEMDAS again. But we don't leave the parentheses until we're down to one number. Now, obviously, in our problem, we have parentheses up here. So, matter of fact, I'm just going to erase this. So, uh, you probably are saying, hey, Mr. YouTube to math man, I guess we're going to have to start inside of here. Well, you would be correct. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about E. E stands for exponents, but you can think of this as a power. 
So like two to the third power. So if we have two to the third power, this little number right here in the top right is called the exponent. This big number is called the base. The entire thing is called a power. So if we have a power of something like this in our problem, well, that's what we're gonna do next. Okay, so now the next thing here is a widely confused uh, part of basic math. So M, D, A, and S, this stands for uh, multiplication, D stands for division, A stands for addition, and S stands for subtraction. Now, it would kind of make sense if I'm saying uh, go from left to right to do multiplication next, but that's not the way, the way this works, okay? And this is where a lot of people get confused with the order of operations. They're like, this is why I don't like uh, math, Mr. YouTube Math Man. You tell me one thing, now it's another thing. Well, indeed, you know, a lot of people are confused with PEMDAS, but this is the way it works. So it's multiplication or division, whatever you see first from left to right. So if I have a math problem and I have division, then multiplication, I'm going to do this first. So for example, if I have 10 divided by 2 times 5, well, I'm going to start with division because that's what I see first. But if I had 10 times um, uh, 5 divided by, let's say, 5, I need to start with multiplication because that's what comes first from left to right. And addition and subtraction work the same way. Okay, so now that we understand the order of operations, we can just kind of focus on this problem, and now we have to kind of come up with a mental strategy. So math is a game, or really, I don't know if it's a game, but uh, you know, if you think of it as a game, uh, you can use this word to win this game, and that is focus, okay? And math should, you know, hopefully, you know, is kind of fun. A lot of you don't like math, and I get that too, but uh, if you kind of look at it as a game, you know, how do you play any game? You know, if you're playing cards or chess or checkers, you are focusing because you're trying to win that game. Well, this is the key to success in pretty much anything. So here, we're going to have to really focus, and hopefully I spelled that right. Focus, let me see here. Yes, I think I did. All right, uh, this uh, YouTube channel is all about math. Please do not uh, take any spelling lessons from me because I'm notorious at uh, misspelling uh, words incorrectly. Thank goodness for spell check. But anyways, let's continue on with this problem. All right, so we have parentheses five times four squared and parentheses divided by two. So we need to focus here, but in our brain, remember this is a mental math problem. You're kind of thinking, all right, uh, let me see here. What did that YouTube guy tell me? He was like, tell me something like about PEMDAS, right? So in your brain, you have to be thinking about PEMDAS. So PEMDAS, P, you're like, do we have parentheses? Yes, we do. So we need to focus in here, right? So we're concentrating inside of the parentheses. Now, when you're thinking about PEMDAS in here, right, hopefully in our brain, we're just holding this. We haven't even uh, done any math calculations. We're still thinking about what to do. So we're like, all right, we're inside of the parentheses PEMDAS. So the next thing is E, P-E, right? So there's no parentheses here. So E stands for exponents or powers. So is there any powers here? Indeed, there is. So the only thing that we should kind of uh, focus in on at this stage in the problem in our brain is figuring out what four squared is equal to. So what is four squared? Well, four squared is 16. But there is going to be another thing that I'm gonna talk about here in a second that's gonna make this problem even easier, right? But this is where we wanna start, and hopefully most of you, you know, kind of knew that. All right, so we have five times four squared divided by two. The only thing we care about right now is this four squared. Okay, now there's another aspect to this problem that, uh, you know, for those of you that are pretty strong in basic math, will pick up on, and we're writing this as five times four squared divided by two. This whole thing is in parentheses, but uh, an equivalent way to write this problem is this way, okay? This is five times four squared, and then uh, our fraction bar is uh, the division operator, okay? So five times four squared in parentheses divided by two, we can write it uh, this way as well. And I think uh, for those of you that uh, picked up on this, this is gonna make this problem even easier, okay? All right, you don't have to do this, uh, but this is gonna uh, make uh, the calculations far easier in my opinion. Now, I'm only kind of explaining the problem how I would do it using mental math. If you got the right answer and your brain was like, hey, I, I did this, I did that, well, that's perfectly fine, but uh, let's go ahead and take it from here, okay? So five times four squared in parentheses divided by two is the same thing as our problem. Okay, so now uh, we're gonna go ahead and concentrate 
on the parentheses, right? So we're going to deal with uh, the power. We got PEMDAS. We're still thinking about PEMDAS, P-E-M-D-A-S. So we're inside of the parentheses. So we're uh, dealing with that P part. And now E exponents, we're going to deal with 4 squared. So 4 squared is 4 times 4 is 16. All right, so this is our problem right now. So here, we just want to say to ourselves, okay, 5 this is like 5 times 4 squared or 16. So in our brain, we have to think of the problem this way. So you're looking at a 4 squared. Of course, I'm writing it out. But here, if you can imagine the problem this way, 5 times 16 over 2, well, then I think uh, uh, those of you that are pretty strong in basic math can figure this out. Now, I'm not saying this is easy from a mental math perspective, but I think this is kind of the secret to uh, making, making this problem you know, achievable for most of you out there. All right, so we have 5 times 16 over 2, and we have uh, these parentheses. So a lot of you uh, might think, well, I need to finish what's inside of the parentheses first. Well, technically, yes, you need to do that, but not necessarily. So you might be uh, confused. You're like, hey, are we uh, following PEMDAS, Mr. YouTube Math Man? Well, yes, we are. So we're inside of the parentheses. We took care of any powers. But what we have here is multiplication, okay, in this numerator, 5 times 16. We could do this multiplication, but that's going to be kind of hard to do in our brain and then kind of keep track of everything. I think that's going to make this problem, you know, maybe too difficult. But if we know that uh, this right here, this is just a product, okay? So in other words, if I go, if this was 2 times 5, and that is 10, we're, we're, then we're done with parentheses. So I could just have 10 over 2, for example, and then I could factor 10 as 2 times 5 over 2, and then I could cross-cancel the 2s. So here, it's not necessary that you uh, complete the multiplication, okay? to uh, actually continue on with this problem because we could just kind of drop the parentheses, okay? Yes, you can have them, but we can, well, we can drop them as well at this stage. And now we have 5 times 16 over 2. If I gave you this problem as the original problem, I said solve this problem using mental math, well, then hopefully you might say, well, 2 and 16, I can take that 2 and divide it into uh, to, uh, 16, and that's 8. So now I have 5 times 8, which is 40, which is the correct answer. So remember, when you're dealing with um, a fraction, and of course we're dealing with a fraction, this 16 is the same thing as 2 times 8. So really what we have, and I'll just write it out this way to be super crystal clear about this, we have 5 times 2 times 8. 2 times 8 is 16. So this is all multiplication over 2. Okay, so we can cross cancel like factors 1 to 1, and we're left with 5 and 8 in the numerator. So 5 times 8 is 40. All right, so that's the way my little brain works here. But, uh, you know, if you didn't get this right, uh, some of you might be saying, <clears throat> excuse me, um, you might be saying, well, Mr. YouTube Math Man, you know, uh, you, you thought about this problem in advance. You know, could you do this problem? Well, I don't know. You know, I think uh, using mental math skills is a skill. But uh, I think if you try to make it kind of fun and practice things, you know, practice, uh, you know, mental math, you're going to get better with it. All right. And a lot of you out there actually have to do some quick calculations, maybe in your job, maybe you work in construction, and that's excellent. Okay. So the only way you're going to get better at mental math is to practice practice and that's why I make these little videos but uh, the main thing here too is you certainly have to understand the underlying uh, math concepts in order to do a problem like this correctly like uh, the order of operations and dealing with fractions etc all right so with all that being said I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures thank you for your time and have a great day